Fish tank people, what's the deal? I'm back. Off today, like I said in my last video. And I got a request video from my boy David's Aquarium. Check out his channel. He's swapping one of his tanks to a Peacock and Hap show tank. And he wanted me to give him kind of a rundown on how to set it up and some cool tips. So this is by no means a be all end all. And my disclaimer to all you new guys is don't start with cichlids first. Try some other community tanks first when you think you got that under wraps. Then go to maybe some aggressive fish, but uh, it's not as hard as it looks. I know it sucks because some of these can get really expensive, but when you get them when you get them young, um, you can watch them grow, which is the cool thing about it too. Which also is nice for aggression because they get used to each other over time. Um, but first of all, before we even start talking about the fish themselves, uh, there's a couple things you need to know when you're starting a cichlid tank. One is that peacocks and haps are free swimmers; they don't live in the rocks. Although it's nice to have hiding places to spread out some of that aggression. Um, they are carnivorous, so they don't they eat anything from crustacean all the way to um, other cichlids in some cases. Uh, so it's good to get a solid cichlid pellet um, to feed them on. New Life Spectrum has a good cichlid formula for small to medium fish, and then you can even get the larger size cichlid pellets from uh, other wholesalers. But um, good variety in the diet's good up, of course. Um, also, you, like I said, you want a lot of swimming area. If you notice in my tank, it's only one third of rocks. You know, barely even one third of it is covered with rocks. The rest is good swimming area. Um, but they're overstocked. I have 15 halves and peacocks in a 75 gallon tank. So definitely not something you normally seeing, but it is gorgeous. Uh, but you do that for a reason, is that cichlids will push each other around as you see right here in the boiler on the back pushing people. But you notice he'll push one and then he'll see another one and he'll go push him and he'll see another one and he'll go push him. So it's, uh, it's, that's why you have more than just two fish in the tank. Because if it was just a boily eye and one other fish, the other fish would be dead because the boily eye would chase him until he died. Um, so overstock, overstock, overstock. These are sandstone blocks, five by five. You can get them at Lowe's for 88 cents a piece. Go spend 20 bucks on blocks, bring them back to your house, crack some up with a hammer, and you'll have a cool little scape. This is pool filter sand. If you have high pH out of your tap, Cichlids love high pH, uh, or African cichlids love high pH, so I just use the pool filter sand. Uh, it's a bigger grain sand, so it doesn't get caught up in your filters, but it's good enough for them to chew on. Uh, if you have a low pH and you want to buffer the pH, use crushed coral. Uh, that's the best way to do it, in my opinion, instead of adding all those chemicals in, just use crushed coral and it'll buffer your pH up for you. Um, and then also, probably nothing less than a four foot tank, so 40 long, 45 long, 55. Anything like that or bigger would probably do you pretty well. Um, and I don't need this many rocks in my tank. You can have much less than this. As long as you have a few caves and hiding places, uh, there's usually a pretty, you usually be pretty good with peacocks and haps for sure. So um, once you figure out the tank that you want and you got the rocks and the sand and everything set up, uh, you want to think about filtration obviously is, is huge. So I have a 15 gallon sump under here that pushes 700 gallons per hour and then another hang on the back that does roughly the same so I'm doing about twice as much as I need for this tank uh, on average but cichlids are dirty and you want to make sure that they your tank stays clean and pristine like this one is it looks like clear water um, and it's good to over filter with these guys because they're, they're kind of messy and I have the Cynodonis cats and the, the customers and all those guys that help me out but uh, the tank still does get a little dirty so about once a month I will vacuum the top layer of sand just nice and easy. What I also do is I threw some Malaysian trumpet snails in here which have turned into about a thousand of them now and they help break down some of that uh, waste and detritus that get underneath the uh, sand. Um, so water changes probably once a week at least 75 percent I would do no doubt about it 75 percent uh, maybe 50 percent twice a week or 75 percent once a week and cichlids can handle it. You hear stories of you know bull sharks being a hundred miles up freshwater rivers reason that is, is because they're bigger fish so they can handle it uh, cichlids don't don't stress out about tiny ammonia spikes or or uh, water changes the temperature changing a degree or two it's not a big deal I run water from here to my sink and from my sink directly to here and when everything's said and done I put the chlorinator in it and start the filters and uh, they're fine all the time so over filter overstock 
once you figure out what kind of stock you want, get an idea of your first few fish you're going to put in. In my opinion, I would not add any less than four to start the tank. So four or five fish to start the tank. Watch your ammonia because you're adding multiple fish at once. It's even a good idea uh, to maybe get some goldfish and put them in for a couple weeks to let them maybe cycle the tank for you first and then add your four or five new fish. Um, and then after that, don't add any less than two. So two or three is what you want to add at a time to make sure that one new, if you add one new fish, he's not going to get beat up. Um, so you want to get your stock up pretty heavy for uh, 75. I have 15 or 16 haps plus three Cynodonis and a Pleco. So uh, for a 90 gallon, maybe 20 uh, haps and peacocks. And you want to you know, obviously the, the, the smaller they are when you buy them, the better off, but you only want males in a tank like this because if you have a female, uh, you might have some issues. There's other ways to do it too. If you don't want an all male show tank like this, you can get, say you like the Borlei, the big dog here, you can get two male Borlei and then seven females and you can put them in here with your cleanup crew and they'll have this little breeding colony and the males won't mess with each other too much because there'll be enough females to chase around. So, uh, tons of different ways to do it. Gorgeous color, closest thing to salt water you can get. My favorite tank that I've ever had, by far, not even close. Um, but it does take a little maintenance, and chances are you're gonna lose a fish here and there because they are aggressive, because um, they are in close quarters, because they, you know, they are dirty. So keep up with your maintenance through the whole nine yards, and if y'all have any questions, if you have a stocking list you might wanna throw out, let me know, I'll look over at it, hit you an email back. And uh, definitely hit me up if y'all got any request videos for sure. Let me know. But Fish Tank TV, Shane Church, uh, DarkStarAquatics.ning.com. Hit me up on there. YouTube, the whole nine yards. Let you out.